Assalamu alaikum students. Welcome to the second lecture of Cultural Anthropology. I am going to be continuing with the substance of the first lecture and try to introduce some other uh, important aspects of cultural anthropology to you today which will then form the substance of the remaining lectures. Now, if you recall from the last time, essentially, we had uh, introduced and spoken about and thought about the idea of cultural anthropology and what anthropologists are and what they try, the different types of anthropologists try to do in, in the world, and that is essentially they try to look at human behavior and the way that human, human beings live, think, act, and exist in the world. Now, today what I'm going to try and do is introduce you to some very fundamental aspects of culture. This is going to still be a part of a continuation of the first lecture. And the first lecture and today's lecture is going to basically provide a general basic introduction to the idea of cultural anthropology. And based on these two lectures of today, you would have, in one form or the other, in one sentence or the other, have gotten clues to the, as to the kinds of issues that will be explored in much greater detail in the remaining lectures. So now I will try and focus in on the current issue at hand, and that is the concept of culture and the application of cultural anthropology. Now, isse pehle ke main aapko mazid culture ke baare mein details dun, main sirf aapko ek, ek general si misal deta hun. Wo ye hai ke culture jo hai, wo jo anthropology ka jo focus hai, wo culture mein hai. Jis tarah misal ke taur pe, agar political science hai, to political science mein zyada tar focus jo hai, wo issues of power par hai. That is the primary focus of political science to look at the various forms of power, how political parties, how individuals exert power in the form of political parties, in the form of political agitation, when it comes to that. And essentially it is the, the basic principle of political science is to look at the issue of power. Similarly, sociology looks at society, at how societies function, at what societies do. Economics looks at production, consumption, distribution, you know, and, and how people basically, the kinds of, the kinds of issues that are involved in, in their economic welfare. So, cultural anthropology, what cultural anthropology is doing is looking at culture. It is looking at the idea of culture, the importance of culture, the value of culture. Now, culture includes everything that people have, think, do as members of a society. All people have a culture. Now, this is the meaning of this, basically, every person is a उसका कोई ना कोई कल्चर है। I mean, वैसे अगर आप अंग्रेजी की यूसेज में देखें या आप हमारी यूसेज में देखें तो उससे कई बार ये तासुर होता है कि कल्चर जो है वो सिर्फ रिफाइन्ड लोगों के पास कल्चर होता है। अब जिस तरह मिसाल के तौर पे कहते हैं जी ये बड़ा कल्चर्ड इंसान है इसको तो आर्ट्स के बारे में पता है, elite tabka hai jisko in cheezon ke bare mein pata hai aur uski wajah se uske us insaan ke paas culture hai ab jo cultural anthropologist hai wo culture ko is tarah nahi dekhta to in to a cultural anthropologist the idea of culture is very different it is basically any person who thinks who acts and who behaves 
in a certain manner has culture so by this definition har insaan ka culture hai chahe wo sophisticated culture ho chahe wo unsophisticated culture ho chahe wo africa mein rahe ya indonesia mein rahe ya china mein rahe ya japan mein rahe ya england mein rahe har insaan ka chahe wo in ilakon ke andar rural areas mein ho urban areas mein ho har insaan ka culture hai so ye sabse jo ahem baat hai culture ke bare mein wo ye hai ki all people have culture and that culture is defined by the idea of the kinds of behavior that people have and what they think what they do and what they have that defines their culture the second aspect of culture is that it comprises of material objects ideas values attitudes and patterned ways of behaving what this point is trying to get across to you is that कल्चर जो है वो एक पैटर्नड तरीका है अब कल्चर इस्तेमाल तो हम बड़ी आसानी से इसको कर लेते हैं कल्चर के आइडिया को मगर इस आइडिया के पीछे जो फलसफा है जो इसकी डेफिनेशन है कल्चर की बिलखसूस कल्चरल एंथ्रोपोलॉजी के लिहाज से वो ये है कि एक कल्चर्ड पैटर्न है जिसको कल्चर डिफाइन कर रहा है सो इसमें ये है कि आपके मटेरियल ऑब्जेक्ट्स शामिल हो जाते हैं अब मटेरियल ऑब्जेक्ट्स इफ यू रिमेंबर फ्रॉम द लास्ट लेक्चर व ऑब्जेक्ट्स दैट कैन बी सीन कैन बी फेल्ट कैन बी टेंजिबली डेल्ट विद अब आर्कियोलॉजिस्ट जो हैं वो अगर आर्कियोलॉजिकल डिग पर जाते थे और एक्सकवेट करते थे टूल्स को लोगों के कपड़ों को वो किस तरह के एग्रीकल्चरल प्रैक्टिस को यूज कर रहे थे बेस्ड ऑन द रिमेन्स ऑफ ई द क्रॉप बेस्ड ऑन आई मीन ई द रिमेन्स ऑफ सीड्स नाउ दीज वर ऑल मटीरियल ऑब्जेक्ट्स एंड मटीरियल ऑब्जेक्ट्स करंटली हमारे जो आजकल के कंटेम्प्रेरी हालात हैं उनके अंदर भी एग्जिस्ट करते हैं अब जिस तरह हमारे जो कपड़े पहनने का स्टाइल है जो हमारे इर्द गिर्द जो आइटम्स हैं जिनको हम यूज करते हैं ये सारे मटीरियल ऑब्जेक्ट्स हैं they define a culture now i mean me sitting here speaking here to you in english which is a universal language now me using a computer by virtue of which i can connect to the whole world is itself a culture it's the culture of globalization so essentially what i'm trying to convey to you is that culture has material objects culture has also non material objects i mean if you recall we also said that archaeologists by looking at material culture can give an idea an indication of how people in the past used to think and behave i mean in current circumstances there is no need to do, uh, to do that because an, an anthropologist can go into a particular society observe the behavior of people uh, talk to them get an idea of the kinds of ideas that these people hold and on the basis of that determine non material aspects of culture so ye jo non material aspects hain culture ke yani ke logon ke attitudes unke ravaiye unke unki jo belief systems hain wo uska bhi ek bahut bada asar hai culture pe kyunki wo influence karte hain ki insaan behave kaise karenge act kaise karenge सो so, इसलिए जो कल्चर के नॉन मटेरियल एस्पेक्ट्स हैं ये भी बहुत जरूरी हैं एक और अहम चीज है कल्चर के बारे में वो ये है कि कल्चर एक शेयर्ड फिनमिना है यानी कि कल्चर जो है वो एक बंदे का कल्चर नहीं होता है कल्चर जो है वो हजारों लोगों का कल्चर होता है लाखों लोगों का कल्चर होता है देर इज अ कल्चर ऑफ बाई वर्चू डिफाइंड बाई वर्चू ऑफ नेशनैलिटी as pakistanis we all have culture culture also exist in the form of smaller groups i mean there is a particular culture of being a punjabi let's say there is a particular culture of being uh, an urban educated or a foreign educated person there is a particular culture of uh, you know being a muslim for example there is a particular culture of cosmopolitan life 
अब जो दही इलाके हैं उनका कल्चर जो है उनका जो द वे दे थिंक द वे दे वैल्यू टाइम द वे दे दे बिहेव इज डिफरेंट देन पीपल हु लिव इन द सिटी so there are distinct types of culture then within a city i mean there there are different types of culture but essentially the idea about culture is that culture is a shared phenomena so people have to share culture you can't have a culture of an individual ek bande ka culture nahi ho sakta i mean it has to be a phenomena ke ek se zyada log ek chhota group ek usse bada group ek usse bada group यानी कि मिसाल के तौर पर मुसलमान मुसलमानों का एक अपना खसूस जो है वो कल्चर है सो so, कल्चर की अहम बात जो है वो ये है कि कल्चर हैज टू बी अ शेयर्ड फिनमिना ताकि आपस में जो लोग हैं उनका एक कॉमन कल्चर हो और वो एक दूसरे की बात को समझ सकें ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ दैट कल्चर अब कल्चरल इन्फ्लुंस जो हैं दे केन बी री एंड दस Do not yield uniform effects. इसका कहने का ये मतलब है कि कल्चर की जो इन्फ्लुंसेज हैं वो लाजमी नहीं है कि हम हमारा जो कल्चर है वो हमारे पर ऐसी इन्फ्लुंस कर दे कि हमें बेसिकली ऑल ऑफ अस एक्ट एग्जैक्टली इन द सेम मैनर दैट इज नॉट पॉसिबल आई मीन कल्चर येस इट्स ट्रू इट इन्फ्लुंसेज पीपल uh to a large degree it influences the patterns of their behavior the kinds of you know ways in which they'll react their belief systems but by and large culture ki jo influence hai wo har insaan jo hai har individual jo hai wo apne liye interpret karta hai so usse ye hota hai ki culture ka jo effect hai wo har इंसान के ऊपर थोड़ा सा डिफरेंट होता है आई मीन अ बीइंग अ पाकिस्तानी ऑल ऑफ आसा पाकिस्तानी ना मी बीइंग अ पाकिस्तानी आई टू मी द वर्ड पाकिस्तानी माइट ट्रिगर ऑफ दिस यू नो रिएक्शन कि मैं तो पाकिस्तानी हूं क्योंकि मैं तो पान खाता हूं अब आप अगर अपने आप को पाकिस्तानी समझें तो हो सकता है आप कहें कि जी बड़े सगीर में गजलें जो थी वो इंडियन सब कॉन्टिनेंट में जब फिर मुसलमान आए फ्यूजन हुई ऑफ कल्चर्स तो एक ये लिटरेरी रिएक्शन था और गजलें बन गई तो मैं तो जब अपने आप को समझता हूं पाकिस्तानी तो आई लुक एट ऑल यू नो दीज हिस्टोरिकल इन्फ्लुएंस देर इंटर मिंगलिंग देर इंटर एक्शन एंड एंड द प्रोडक्शन ऑफ अ गजल सो दैट टू मी डिफाइन्स माई नेशनैलिटी माई सेंस ऑफ नेशनैलिटी एंड हाउ इट वॉज हाउ द आइडिया ऑफ गजल हैज evolved in the last 50 uh, 50 or so years since 1947 since independence because it, ghazal is still a, a much cherished form of art and culture in pakistan so essentially what i'm trying to say is that culture jo hai wo har banda jo hai har insaan jo hai wo apne liye interpret karta hai aur is uski wajah se culture jo hai wo har insaan ko ek jaisa nahi bana deta now another important thing about culture is that culture is learned while humans do have instincts culture is not transmitted genetically ye ek kafi aham point hai iska kehne ka ye maqsad hai ke culture jo hai wo insaan to a certain degree culture ko learn karte hain आई I मीन mean, हम ये इसका ये कहने का मतलब नहीं है कि हमारे इंस्टिंक्ट्स नहीं हैं हर इंसान के इंस्टिंक्ट्स होते हैं हमारे नेचुरल इंस्टिंक्ट्स हैं हमें जो कि सीखने नहीं पड़ते हम जब पैदा होते हैं तो कई इंसान में इंस्टिंक्चुअल चीजें हैं मगर इसका ये कहने का मतलब नहीं है कि इंसान के जब वो पैदा होता है तो उसके जितने इंस्टिंक्ट्स हैं वो सारे उसके अंदर एम्बाइब्ड होते हैं आई I मीन mean, कोई भी ऐसा इंसान नहीं है जो इंस्टिंक्चुअली पैदा होकर लर्न हाउ टू वॉक हाउ टू टॉक हाउ टू स्पीक वॉट टू थिंक दीज आर ऑल एस्पेक्ट दैट आर लर्न सो ये एक बेसिक डिफ्रेंसिएशन है जो कि इंसान और जानवर में फर्क है नाउ एन एनिमल इज बॉर्न विद बायोलॉजिकल इंस्टिंग्स दैट imbibe in it 
essentially all the attributes, all the major attributes and life coping skills that it needs. If you take 10 or 15 ants and you place them on a deserted island, you will find these ants which are let's say infants, I mean they, they, these ants or some other mammals, they're born and you just transport them to a deserted island. and you go back, visit the area in 5 years or 10 years and you will see them acting and behaving in all those manners that the rest of their uh, species exhibit. So, if ants, they have a colony, they have ants, they colony, they have a ants, they maintain hongi. they will have this elaborate maze in which they will live, they will be hunting using similar skills that are evident in the rest of their species. Magar, if you take a human being and you try to take 10 or 15 human beings from the most educated families with parents, you know, which have the highest IQ, up, unke bachon ko leke, be it of any color, any race, and you put these 10 or 15 human babies on an island, you will find, you go back in 10 or 15 years, you will find these human beings to be less than savages. They won't, most probably they're not going to have developed a, a language I mean, certainly not in 10 or 15 years, that would not have happened. They would be probably talking, if they're still alive, they'll be talking in grunts. They will not know how to use tools. They won't have an understanding of the idea of creating even a fire. So, jo insaan ki jitni advancements hain, wo in 10 or 15 years, you would see man returning to basically a very, very, very basic level of existence. So, what this kind of an example is meant to illustrate is that insan jo hai, they have to learn culture. It's an active, hands-on process by which human beings become who we are. We are not born this way. We just have some basic instincts like, agar and someone throws a brick at me, so I will duck. No one, is, no one has to tell me that if you eat a ink, if you eat an ink, then you will be like this. No. That is going to be instinct. Okay? But I wouldn't know how to express myself. I wouldn't be dressing in a certain way. I wouldn't be talking in a certain way. I wouldn't know how to operate this machine if I wasn't taught how to do this. So that has been taught to me by virtue of my culture, by virtue of the educational institutions and the other opportunities that I've been able to avail out of this. So having said this, now let me go on and talk about the process of learning by which we get culture. And the process of learning culture is called enculturation, which is similar in process but differs in terms of content. Now enculturation, jo hai, wo har society may enculturation hoti hai. People's parents, the educational and political institutions that exist in that particular society, no matter what form they take, have this active process of teaching young children, jo ke infants hoti hai, unki tab se training shuru ho jati hai, ke bhai, agar aap, let's say ke aap Tanzanian grasslands in Africa mein agar aap ek hunting tribe mein paida hoye to aapko life coping skills jo hain wo pata chalengi aapka jo aapke ird gird aapke peers hain unke zariye elders ke zariye jo customs hain jo particular taur tarike hain of uh, certain indigenous tribes in Africa those will, will be imparted to the infant automatically by virtue of interaction with parents, by virtue of interaction with elders, by virtue of interaction with peers. Hum logon ko bhi, if you take a fairly conventional example of someone born in, in a city in a developing country like Pakistan, I mean we have, it be, most of us 
with a certain level of income get the chance to go to school. There we interact with uh, children, we have our own parents uh, who tell us how to sit, how to uh, you know, clean ourselves, how to behave. These are basically things which are taught to us. So this idea is called enculturation. Now, culture is necessary for our survival and affects how we think and act. Now, this jo idea of culture, I will join with my previous point. One thing is that culture is that we understand our children's values. Now, depending on our situation, on the circumstances of our parents and the particular societies that we exist in, we will understand different kinds of things. Now, if I am born Tanzania mein paida hua hu aur main agar Tanzania ke kisi dehat mein rehta hu to jo mujhe cheeze sikhai jayengi they will be different to the things taught to me if i happen to be born in los angeles let's say you know to japanese parents so ye jo cheeze hain ye differ karti hain jo content hai wo differ karta hai magar जो कंटेंट के अंदर जो तरीका है समझाने का वो सिमिलर है हर कल्चर में वालदैन के थ्रू पेयर्स के थ्रू और सोशल इंस्टीट्यूशंस एंड कल्चरल इंस्टीट्यूशंस के थ्रू ही इंसान कल्चर को पिक अप करते हैं और ये जो प्रोसेस है ये प्रोसेस को सीखने में मतलब आप ये नहीं कह सकते कि जी इस कल्चर में जो बच्चे हैं वो ज्यादा जल्दी कल्चर पिक अप कर लेते हैं या उस कल्चर में जो हैं लोग वो कल्चर ज्यादा लेट पिक अप करते हैं दैट्स नॉट ट्रू इट्स जस्ट कि आपके जो गिवन हालात हैं उसके मुताबिक इंसान जो हैं जो जो अकलमंदी है इन टर्म्स ऑफ पिकिंग अप कल्चर दैट इज बाय एंड लार्ज द सेम इट्स जस्ट द सरकमस्टांसेस एंड द काइंड्स ऑफ इंफॉर्मेशन व्हिच इज इंपार्टेड बाय दोस सरकमस्टांसेस व्हिच वेरी नाउ दिस आईडिया आई वांट टू टाई टू द आईडिया ऑफ कल्चर बीइंग नेसेसरी फॉर आवर सर्वाइवल एंड अफेक्टिंग how we think and act so kehne ka matlab ye hai ki agar mere circumstances jo hain wo different hain to i will act and behave differently yani ki agar main ek dahi ilake mein paida hua hu aur mere maa baap kisan hain to mujhe jo cheeze sikhai jayengi they will be different to the things taught to me if my father is a mechanic and i have to grow up and earn a income working in his वर्कशॉप बाय फिक्सिंग कार्स सो हो सकता है कि मुझे प्लाव के बजाय या या खेती बाड़ी या कॉटन पिकिंग के बजाय मुझे हो सकता है रेंच ऑपरेट करनी आती हो बाय द टाइम आई एम ट्वेल्व नाउ दैट इज डिक्टेटेड बाय द सोशियो इकोनॉमिक स्टेटस ऑफ माय सराउंडिंग्स सो कल्चर लार्जली डिपेंड्स ऑन द लार्जर सर्कमस्टांसिस कल्चर उस तरह इवॉल्व करता है आपके हालात के मुताबिक सो ये आप द सर्कमस्टांसिस इन्फ्लुएंस कल्चर एंड दैट इन्फ्लुएंस इज वॉट चिल्ड्रन पिक अप इन अदर पॉइंट इज दैट पीपल फ्रॉम द सेम कल्चर कैन प्रिडिक्ट हाउ अदर्स विल रिएक्ट ड्यू टू कल्चरल कंडीशनिंग नाउ कल्चरल कंडीशनिंग इज दिस आइडिया दैट like we mentioned earlier that culture is a shared phenomena and there are many other people who share culture although they interpret it differently so people who share the the same culture will by and large to a great degree know how the other person will react they can predict behavior of other people and that allows them to interact easily with people from their same culture अब इसकी मिसाल ये है कि आप फर्ज करें जी आप पढ़े हुए हैं एफ कॉलेज में नाउ एफ कॉलेज का एक पर्टिकुलर कल्चर है अब आपके साथ जो आपके फर्स्ट ईयर सेकंड ईयर थर्ड ईयर में स्टूडेंट्स हैं अब उनके साथ आपका हर रोज उठना बैठना है या अगर आप कहीं किसी दही इलाके से बिलोंग करते हैं तो आपका बचपन से आपके जो सात कॉलीग्स हैं आप उनको जानते हैं Uh, when you meet them after 10 years or when you are talking to them in the present you n- have the same circumstances usually chances hote hain ke friends ke circumstances jo hain wo similar hote hain 
सो दैट मेक्स इट वेरी ईजी फॉर यू टू कम्युनिकेट विद दैट पर्सन बट जब आप कम्युनिकेट करें विद समन एल्स फ्रॉम हु हैज डिफरेंट सर्कमस्टांसिस तो तब कम्युनिकेशन इज मच मोर डिफिकल्ट आई मीन अगर इफ यू बिलोंग टू अ रूरल एरिया एंड यू ट्राई टू टॉक टू अ स्ट्रेंजर हु कम्स फ्रॉम द सिटी या वाइसा वर्सा अगर मैं शहरी हूं और कोई दही इलाके से कोई बंदा आता है तो मुझे उसके साथ बात करने में कम्युनिकेट करने में बिसाइड ये नहीं कि हाय हेलो या ग्रीटिंग्स वगैरह नहीं बट जरा डीपर कम्युनिकेशन करने में प्रॉब्लम होगा सो so, उसकी वजह उस प्रॉब्लम की वजह यह है कि आर सर्कमस्टांसिस डिफरेंट आर कल्चर्स डिफर वी आर सर्कमस्टांसिस माय सर्कमस्टांसिस आर डिक्टेटेड बाय लाइफ इन द सिटी हिज सर्कमस्टांसिस आर डिक्टेटेड बाय लाइफ इन रूरल एरिया सो वी हैव Diff- slightly different cultures which makes it difficult for us to communicate but when i find someone who went to the kind of school that i went to who i've known since a while who has a similar culture to my culture that makes our communication easy i mean to take a even larger example agar ek pakistani ek aur pakistani se milega to uska kyunki shared culture hai un dono ko pata hai ji ki eid kya hoti hai और रमजान के दौरान खाना नहीं मिलता है अब अगर यहां पर कोई चीनी आ जाए जो चाइना से कोई बंदा आ जाए जिसको रमजान के बारे में इल्म नहीं है तो ही विल बी यू नो टेकन अ बैक के यार खाना क्यों नहीं मिल रहा है क्योंकि वो हमारा उसका और हमारा मजहब मुख्तलिफ है उसका और हमारा कल्चर मुख्तलिफ है ही विल नॉट नो नेसेसरली हाउ टू इंटरक्ट विद अस दैट वेल so essentially these two people belonging to two different nationalities have been conditioned in a different manner and because of their cultural conditioning they will have difficulty in communicating and if we have the same cultural conditioning be it at the national sub national level we have greater ease in predicting how the other person will act now the other idea that i need to bring your attention to is that of cultural universal what are cultural universals cultural universals include economic systems systems of marriage and family educational systems social control systems and systems of communication now every society no matter how different it is from another society needs to have certain systems in place for it uh, for it to be able to function सो so, हर जो है हर सोसाइटी जो है हर कल्चर है उसमें कई चीजें तो होनी ही होनी है उसमें अरेंजमेंट हैव टू बी मेड फॉर पीपल टू टू रिप्रोड्यूस एंड दैट नीड्स टू बी डन थ्रू द मैरिज कॉन्ट्रैक्ट सो एक ये सिस्टम है एक सिस्टम है कि जी बच्चों ने जो है वो तालीम तो किसी ना किसी तरह तालीम या चीजें जो वो लर्न उन्होंने लाइफ कोपिंग उनकी जो लर्निंग स्किल्स हैं वो हासिल करनी ही करनी है सो दे हैज टू बी सम काइंड ऑफ एन एजुकेशनल सिस्टम फॉर्मल इनफॉर्मल दे हैज टू बी एन इकोनॉमिक सिस्टम दे हैव टू बी ऑल दीज सिस्टम्स इन प्लेस फॉर अ ह्यूमन बीइंग टू बी एबल टू फंक्शन एंड दीज आर वाइटल पार्ट ऑफ कल्चर नाउ एन अदर थिंग विच इज a cultural universal and that all cultures are meant to have is that they are able to communicate effectively and cultures in order to be able to communicate effectively need to have a language system and all cultures have language systems they can produce different languages but they need to have systems of communication another point is that cultural systems some cultural systems are seemingly invisible such as social safety nets now what what are social safety nets social safety nets are basically mechanisms which are put in place by cultures that protect the the weak that protect those who are old those who are orphaned that protect people who have encountered certain problems in life illness health etc now in the west the most common social safety net is that of insurance i mean you go to any industrialized country and how do they cope with you know all these problems that human beings encounter in 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 their life 
through insurance. Almost everyone has insurance of some kind or another. Now you take a developing country, I mean, you take our own country, for example, and how many people have insurance? Very few. How do we, does that mean that uh, we will not fall ill? Does that mean that, you know, there are no problems that, that people in Pakistan face? Of course, I mean, there are tons of problems. And how do people cope with them? They cope with them through these informal social safety nets, and that's the extended family. Here, jo families ka jo taur tarika rak rakhao ka jo ek invisible system hai, that to a large degree ensures ke those who have problems with life are actually able to cope. It might not be a pleasant existence, but they are able to survive by virtue of these networks. Now to an outsider, they'll say ke yahan to social safety net hi nahi hai ji koi. Yahan par to no one has insurance. But they have to realize that there is an invisible insurance. There is a social safety net. I mean, which might not be the most desirable form of a safety net because the state, if it provides a safety net in the form of insurance, that means lesser burden on a family. But there are these invisible social safety nets. So the point here is that these social safety nets and these cultural systems that are in place might not be necessarily visible. Another point is that the versatility of culture and the versatility of cultural systems illustrates how flexible and adaptable humans are. Now, if you look at these cultural systems that we've spoken about, be it of language, be it of education, be it of social safety nets, I mean, they exist in many forms. So, I mean, you have different types of languages within a country. I mean, you have regional variations. Here, Pashto, bolte hai, Punjabi, bolte hai, Saraiki, bolte hai, Balochi. Bolte hai. So, ek to, wo local language ki variation. Hai. Phir, I mean, at the, at the larger level, Asian continent, how many languages are flourishing? So, this shows that people language ke saath cultures attached, hai, traditions attached, hai, customs attached. Hai. And this variety hai of cultures, traditions, of ways of being in the world, that shows that people are so versatile that they have made their own circumstances, their circumstances, how they have made their circumstances, how they have made their cultures. So this shows the inventiveness, the flexibility of human beings. There are two important aspects I need to draw your attention to within the idea of culture, and they are the adaptive and the dysfunctional or maladaptive features of culture. Human beings rely more on cultural than biological adaptation to adjust to versatile environments. Now, ye, this is not new. We have already spoken about this, ke hum rely karte hain, rather than biology and genes and instincts, we rely on culture. So, having said that, maladaptive or dysfunctional aspects of culture, such as pollution, can threaten or damage human environments. Now, ek to hamare paas aage aise aspects jin pe hum rely karte hain, society mein zinda rehne ke liye culture ke kai to bade functional aur zaruri aspects hain jo ke biology ke ilawa hame cope karna sikha rahe hain duniya ke sath wo to ho gaye ji acche functional aspects ab simultaneously jo ye point 2 hai screen par wo concern karta hai dysfunctional aspects ko yani ke wo aspects jo हमारी environment के अंदर ऐसी practices हैं जो हमारी surroundings को harm कर रही हैं। मिसाल के तौर पे इतने ज़्यादा distances को cover करने के लिए इंसान ने जात की गाड़ी, which would allow easy transport between one place and, and another. I mean, or a cycle or a motorcycle or uh, the public transport system. But उसको जब population बढ़ गई और concentration geographic areas ki jo thi wo dense hoti gayi to natija uska nikla ki ji pollution jo thi wo industry bhi dhuen chhod rahi hai pollution kar rahi hai chemicals daryaon mein phenk rahi hai 
اوپر سے جی خیر سے آئی مین بی ایٹ ڈیزل کارز اور بی ایٹ یو نو آل دیز ادر ویہیکلس آئی مین ان امیرکا دے سے جو پلوشن کا حال ہے وہ کوئی چالیس سے ساٹھ فیصد جو ہے پلوشن کو ڈائریکٹلی ٹرانسپورٹ سے جو پلوشن ایمٹ ہو رہی ہے وہ پلوشن کاز کر رہی ہے امیرکا کا جو پلوشن پرابلم ہے وہ چالیس سے ساٹھ فیصد جو ہے ایسٹیمیٹڈ ہے ٹو بی کاز بائی ٹرانسپورٹ پرابلم سو یو کین ہیو اے ویری یوزفل سیمنگلی اڈیپٹو فیچر آف کلچر وچ کین بیکم ڈس فنکشنل اور میل اڈیپٹو اینڈ پلوشن جو ہے وہ نتیجہ ہے آف لاٹس آف کارز ان اے اسمال اماؤنٹ آف اسپیس دیٹ از ہارمنگ دی انوائرمنٹ ناؤ دے آر ایسپیکٹس ود ان کلچر دیٹ آر انٹیگریٹو وی ہیو ٹو ریئلائز دیٹ ان دس گوز بیک ٹو دا فرسٹ لیکچر وی آئی ہیڈ مینشن دی آئیڈیا آف anthropology being a holistic discipline it looks at things the bigger picture of things so ab culture bhi jo hai culture bhi koi jis tarah humne abhi baat ki thi ke koi choti moti cheez nahi hai ke one person can belong to a particular culture no culture jo hai wo groups of people belong to a culture i mean be it someone from a rural area from an urban area from a developing country from a muslim country be it you know the chinese culture traditional culture these are things that groups of people that population segments of populations belong to so in that sense culture is itself not only does it involve a lot of people it involves it's an integrative concept cultures are logical and coherent systems shaped by particular context now ye jo statement hai ki logical سسٹم ہے جو کہ سرکمسٹانسز کی وجہ سے کلچر جو ہے وہ ایک سرکمسٹانسز کو دیکھ کر ایک ریئیکشن ہے یہ ایک سوفسٹیکیٹڈ انڈرسٹینڈنگ ہے آف کلچر آئی مین کہ آپ اپنے انسان جو ہیں وہ اپنے حالات کو دیکھ کر اس میں جو کمپلشنز ہیں حالات کی ان کو دیکھ کر اپنا کلچر کریٹ کرتا ہے آئی مین for a cultural anthropologist this is what culture means it doesn't mean ke aap ghazlein sunte hain ya pop music sunte hain that doesn't necessarily constitute culture they are both examples of culture now various parts of culture are interconnected yet culture is more than a sum of its parts ab iska kehne ka maqsad ye hai ke culture jo hai ye sari cheeze hain wo pop music bhi hai classical music bhi hai wo paan bhi hai you know wo دیہی علاقے میں جو بندہ ہے اس کا دھوتی پہننے کا انداز بھی ہے وہ لسی پینا بھی ہے دیز آر آل ایسپیکٹس آف کلچر بٹ کلچر بینگ اے پاکستانی از مور دین اونلی ایٹنگ اے پان مور دین اونلی ڈرنکنگ لسی مور دین اونلی ویئرنگ اے دھوتی اٹ از اے لارجر آئیڈیولوجیکل لارجر بلیف سسٹم اے لارجر وے آف ڈوئنگ تھنگز اے لارجر مینرزم دیٹ ڈیفائنس کلچر سو یہ کلچر کے چھوٹے چھوٹے جو پارٹس ہیں دے میک اپ اے بگر سم اور ایک چیز جو ضروری ہے وہ یہ ہے کہ کلچر جو ہے کلچر چینج کرتا ہے کلچر اسٹیگنٹ نہیں ہے جو پانچ سو سال پہلے روایتیں تھیں اور کلچر تھا دیٹ مے ناٹ نیسرلی بی ٹرو ان دا پریزنٹ سرکمسٹانسز سو کلچر جو ہے وہ ہائیلی اڈیپٹو ہے ہائیلی فلیکسیبل ہے اور مختلف علاقوں کے مختلف کلچرز اب کلچر جو ہے وہ انڈیویجل اس کے ساتھ کیسے انٹریکٹ کرتا ہے ہاؤ ڈز ون پرسن ریلیٹ ٹو دس لارج تھنگ کولڈ کلچر دس لارج فینامنا کولڈ کلچر آل دو کلچر انفلوئنسز آن تھاٹس ایکشنز اینڈ بہیویئرز آف انڈیویجولس اٹ ڈز ناٹ ڈٹرمن دین ایکسکلوسولی دس از این امپورٹنٹ پوائنٹ اسینشلی انڈیویجول نو ڈاؤٹ ول بی افیکٹیڈ بائی کلچر میں پاکستانی ہوں پاکستان کا جو کلچر ہے جو روایت ہے ثقافت ہے دیٹ ہیز افیکٹیڈ می بٹ آفٹر آل آئی ایم این انڈیویجول آئی ول می اینڈ ادر پیپل آلموسٹ ایوری ون ایلس وی ٹین ٹو پک اینڈ چوز تھنگز ود ان دس لارج فینامنا کولڈ کلچر وی پک اینڈ چوز تھنگز دیٹ آر آف آر اون لائکنگ اے وی پک اینڈ چوز تھنگز بائی ورچو آف آر سرکمسٹانسز اب می بینگ اے پاکستانی مائٹ ہیو ہیڈ دی اپرچونیٹی گو ٹو این انگلش میڈیم اسکول سو آئی کین اسپیک 
you know the remnants of a colonial language have been adopted by people like us to be able to communicate using this language which is a universal language now so i can use this language to express my ideas and thoughts to other people who can also speak this language and are not english so kehne ka maqsad ye hai ki ab main mujhe to mere halaat aise the ki maine angrezi seekh li ab wo meri pakistani hone ka bhi hissa hai main as a pakistani i can also speak english ab agar main sarai ki belt mein southern punjab ki paida hota तो हो सकता है कि मेरे लिए तो उर्दू बोलना दुश्वारी होती और मैं ज्यादातर बोलता सिराइकी सो दैट इज आल्सो एन इंडिविजुअल सर्कमस्टांस जो कि लार्जर एक हमारी कलोनियल लेगेसी एंड पॉलिटिकल सर्कमस्टांसेस इन द फैक्ट दैट इंग्लिश इज एन इंग्लिश लैंग्वेज डज नॉट अफेक्ट दैट पर्सन हु बिलोंग्स टू द सराइकी बेल्ट ऑफ लेट से राजनपुर दैट पर्सन विल नॉट हैव एन अपॉर्चुनिटी टू पिक अप दिस पर्टिकुलर एस्पेक्ट ऑफ कल्चर and that person will pick up things that i might not have picked up and know things that that are part part of our heritage and our culture that i don't know so essentially ye individual ka interaction hota hai with culture having said this there is a diverse range of individuality to be found within one culture ab ye jo statement hai ye meri pichli baat ki wazahat kar rahi hai ke kyunki कल्चर जो है वो हर बंदा अपने हालात के मुताबिक ट्यून इन करता है कल्चर में और चंद चीजें पिक एंड चूज करता है चंद चीजें जो हैं वो हालात की वजह से उसको मिलती हैं कंपल्शन होती हैं अपॉर्चुनिटीज ही उसकी वो होती हैं सो so, हर बंदे का जो जो रिएक्शन है टू कल्चर इज ऑन एन इंडिविजुअल बेसिस अब एक और चीज ये है कि हर एवरी मोस्ट कल्चर्स ऑल्सो कंप्राइज ऑफ सब कल्चर्स अब एक ये भी कल्चर में एक और वैरायटी है कि जी कल्चर जो है वो सिर्फ एक बंदे का कल्चर नहीं है कल्चर के अंदर सब कल्चर्स हैं अब पाकिस्तानी होने के नाते हमारा एक कल्चर है लाहौराइट होने के के लिहाज से वी हैव एन अदर कल्चर अ सब कल्चर यू नो दैट ऑफ 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 सर्ट ऑफ दिस कल्चर ऑफ यू नो ससी पुन्नू अ कल्चर ऑफ द बादशाही मस्जिद अ कल्चर ऑफ मीनारे पाकिस्तान और कल्चर ऑफ यू नो गवाल मंडी दैट सम वन फ्रॉम कराची विल नॉट हैव दीज आर ऑल इलिस्ट्रेशन एंड एग्जाम्पल्स ऑफ वेरियस कल्चरल ट्रेट्स मटीरियल कल्चर सो असेंशली ये जो चीजें हैं ये आपको एक वराइटी एक फ्लेवर दे रही हैं कि इंडिविजुअल कैसे इंटरेक्ट करता है कल्चर के साथ हैविंग स्पोकन अबाउट कल्चर इन दिस लार्ज sense and hopefully having having given you a certain amount of detail regarding culture i will now move on to the idea of anthropology and to move on and talk about the discipline of anthropology i will speak about applied versus pure anthropology now pure anthropology is concerned with refining methods in theories to obtain increasingly accurate and valid anthropological data pure anthropology jo hai ya jo theoretical anthropology jo hai uska maqsad jo hai wo ye hai ki ji field mein research hoye ja ke anthropologists cultural anthropologists various cultures ke sath interact kare using different methods they try to look at the circumstances of people the ideas that people have the way people act and using that information they fine tune their own method they revise their own discipline ye hai theoretical level par anthropology now ek jo theory hai anthropology ke uske sath sath ek applied approach hai to anthropology and wo hai ke applied anthropologists जो हैं दे एम टू अंडरस्टैंड एंड रिकमेंड चेंजेस इन ह्यूमन बिहेवियर टू एलिविएट कंटेम्प्ररी प्रॉब्लम्स अब जो अप्लाइड एंथ्रोपोलॉजिस्ट है वो ये करता है कि वो हालात का जायजा लेकर ही ट्राइज टू हैव अ हैंड्स ऑन अप्रोच एंड ट्राइज टू चेंज वेरियस थिंग्स अबाउट अ कल्चर टू मेक द लाइफ ऑफ पीपल ईजियर so it's a much more interactive hands on approach using the knowledge of anthropology to try and change 
excuse me, to try and change circumstances, to try and affect circumstances, to have more positive outcomes for the people who belong to those systems, to those cultures. Isko kehte hain, the problem-oriented approach or ye problem-oriented research kehlati. Ab anthropologists can apply anthropological data, concepts and strategies to the solution of socio-economic, political problems facing different cultures. So anthropologists jo hai, wo apna knowledge, uska jo ek tarika hai to be unbiased, to be able to probe circumstances, ye nahi ke surface level par logon ke halat ke jayze le liye and be judgmental about them, but to really try and attempt to understand where people are coming from, why they have certain beliefs, why they act in a certain manner, why they hold a certain culture, why, you know, why they have these certain traditions. Us knowledge ko use karte huye, anthropologists jo hain, wo masle hal kar sakte hain un logon ke. They can, these maslas can, these problems can range from socio-economic conditions. It could be ke ji, is community mein violence bahut zada hai. It could be ke is community mein poverty bahut zada hai. Is community mein crime zada hai. So they will look at the circumstances behind these uh, apparent problems, these apparent systems that afflict people. It, they will probe their culture, they will look at the way these people think, uh, their larger circumstances that are driving them to exhibit these, you know, these problems. I mean, uh, like I said, the problem of poverty, of crime, of violence. So, in ki hands-on problem-solving approach jo hai anthropologist ki, cultural anthropologist ki, that can help people uh, change their circumstances, live better, you know, cope with their circumstances. Now, anthropologists can focus on development, research or advocacy to help improve the human condition. So, anthropologists ya to wo research kar sakte hain, ya wo jaakar logon ke halat ke baare mein advocacy kar sakte hain, policy makers ko samjha sakte hain ki ji, logon ke halat is tarah is wajah se hain. Aap is ke oopar zor dhe hain ji, policy makers. So, ye jo anthropologists hain, inka pishle 15, 20, 30 saalon mein kaafi influence bada gaya hai. Jis tarah mene aapko mention kiya tha ki mene bhi kuch research ki hui hai in issues par. And and one has been able to use the anthropological approach to approach particular problems to look at the way how people think and act and behave and, and, the, and their circumstances. So given this serious nature of problems and issues that uh, cultural anthropologists have to deal with in a hands-on approach, problem-solving approach, it is necessary for them to have an ethical uh, approach to uh, to their own discipline and to their uh, to their uh, research so there are ethical implications for anthropologists who you know go and work with people who are uh, who are experiencing problems by virtue of their circumstances and for an anthropologist having a hands on approach a problem sol solving approach needs to consider that they have an important role uh, to play and they have to have an ethical manner in, in, in approaching a particular problem and there are ethical implications of their work and they have to, so these cultural anthropologists have to be responsible to the people who are being studied most, biggest ethical implication for cultural anthropologists. They have a responsibility towards the people that they are studying. They have a responsibility to the discipline of cultural anthropology, to their own field. They, they owe something to their field because they represent their field. They owe responsibility to their sponsors. I mean, often people, a cultural anthropologist will be hired by someone, by a non-government organization, by a, by a government organization. They have a sense of responsibility to their own and to their host governments. If, they, if an anthropologist from abroad comes here to do something, 
that anthropologist has a responsibility not only to their own government but to our government because they are working for the Pakistani people. They're trying to, let's say, look at the implications of building a dam in the country. So they could be looking at the cultural patterns of people who will be affected by the construction of the dam. So these are ethical implications. They cannot betray, a cultural anthropologist cannot betray the trust of, of the people that they study. They cannot betray their own governments. They cannot betray people who hire them. They cannot betray their own discipline. And these are serious issues that are, uh, you know, are being spoken about here. So this will basically bring me to the conclusion of, of the second lecture. I uh, do hope that uh, uh, you have found this lecture to be interesting and the attempt here has been to try and continue with the broad introduction of the discipline of anthropology to try and explain what cultural anthropology is, what are the major issues that are dealt with in cultural anthropology. Today's lecture was a particular attempt in continuation of the previous lecture to try and zone in on this idea of culture, which is the basic bottom line issue that cultural anthropologists deal with. I have also tried to give you a basic understanding of the idea of the problem-solving approach in anthropology and its difference from the theoretical approach. And in subsequent uh, lectures, we will be discussing these issues in greater detail. The next lecture is going to be talking about the particular important theories within uh, cultural anthropology. And until uh, then, I, I, will, I will, uh, take leave and, uh, wish you the best of luck. Khudafiz.